Hello YouTube, example 100,000 here, today with an absolutely amazing Pokemon showdown in new battle, I thought this battle was absolutely great, I was really really happy with this battle, so let's get straight into it. I lead off with my Ampharos, looking, uh, thinking that I can Volt Switch out of anything if need be, or since he leans off with his Roselia, I can just get off a Choice Specs Hidden Power Eyes to do heaps of damage right off the bat as he just sets up one layer of toxic spikes. So I don't want to risk anything, I just go again for that item power high ice. Of course he makes a good play, he goes into Frillish to resist it, and as I just bring out Crazily, expecting a scold and be able to take the storm drain boost. And since he's only got one layer of uh, toxic spikes, I'm not too worried. I'm just going to go for the safe Giga Drain, hitting anything. And, of course, it doesn't do much to his mill tank since, obviously, he's uh, a defensive mill tank. So, I use this turn to go for the Toxic um, as he sets up his Stealth Rock. Now, he just uh, randomly goes for the Body Slam, seeing how much damage it does to me. I just, just Giga Drain. Uh, I just keep drink Giga Draining it. Hopefully, uh, it will die. But, of course, unfortunately, he has that Hill Bell. So he won't die from the toxic. And since he outspeeds me, he's going to be able to milk drink all of that damage off. The good thing is, he's only got one layer of toxic spikes, therefore I'm not badly poisoned. So the damage done to me every turn is only 13 or 12%, which is not much. So now I decide to go into Caracosta knowing I have the Lumberry. So I can take the toxic spikes and use the turn to set off Shell Smash, but I knew he was going to predict that, so I went straight for the Waterfall, um, because had I gone for the Shell Smash, he would've, uh, his Lipard would've encored me into the Shell Smash. That was my prediction, and of course, I was right. So I went for the Waterfall, it does heaps of damage, and I just go for the Aqua Jet, but he does have that priority. Substitute, he goes for it once, and he doesn't go for it twice, since he has that Frillish which can take any water attack with that water absorb. So now I'm thinking that Frillish can't do much to me, so I'm gonna use the turn to Shell Smash. But he has that Will O' Wisp, so I am absolutely crippled and have to go for another Shell Smash uh, in hopes of doing any damage to him. So I go straight for that, and he just goes for the Scold. It doesn't quite kill me, but the burn plus my missed stone edge certainly means that I can't do anything to that Frillish and most likely it wouldn't have done that much damage and he would have recovered back. So now I bring in Ampharos knowing that he's gonna switch I just go for the Volt switch and if he had stayed he would have taken a lot of damage. So now he brings in his obviously specially defensive mill tank as I just bring in my Kangas can. So now he's um, expecting me to fake out probably, so I just decided to go for the double edge predicting his switch out, uh, meaning that double edge would do lots of damage to anything. So now he brings in his sweller and predicting the protect, so I'm going to take this turn to go into Toko to t uh, hopefully set up my rocks or rapid spin. But since I know that he's a good player and he doesn't want me to rapid spin his hazards away, I know he's going to just go for the U-turn and go into his uh, Frillish. So I'm just going to go for the Stealth Rock instead of the rapid spin, which was absolutely good. So now he has his Frillish in and I know my Cradily can take any attack from it. So I just go into my Cradily and obviously he predicted that and went for the Nightshade instead of the Scold. So now I have my Cradily in here. I can go for the Toxic, um, just to try and Toxic that uh, Frillish so that it would eventually die, obviously. So now I know his Mill Tank can't do anything to me, so I'll take this turn to recover off lots of damage, and with the leftovers uh, plus the Poison, I'm back up to 80%, which is obviously good. So now he goes into his Riolu. I'm um, thinking he can start roaring me out, but I bring in my Charizard and I just go straight for the attack. And he does have Substitute, and his uh, if he had a Focus Sash, it would have been broken. So um, he couldn't have roared. 
so I just kept on going for acrobatics. I was unsure if I should go into I should go for the sword stance on his switch. I was thinking he was going to switch, but if he had switched into line part, he could have um went for the on call on my sword stance, which would have been a big big problem. So I thought acrobatics would have been the safe play. So now I go for the sword stance thinking that he's going to recover so that I can attack with more damage next time. But unfortunately, it doesn't do that much damage since I lost my flying gem and his scold is um, surprisingly powerful. So I bring in my Ampharos again, knowing that I threaten him and I can just go for the Thunderbolt on anything on his team and nothing on his team can take that Thunderbolt very nicely. So now he brings in his mill tank and he goes for that um, hill bell and I go for the thunderbolt and get a crit. I think that might have been the game changing moment right there That thunderbolt crit. I don't think that thunderbolt would have won it KO'd him otherwise So now I just keep on going for thunderbolt since nothing on my team can take that facade from the swallow So I just decide to let my Ampharos die and that will be that So now I bring in my Kangaskhan thinking I can fake him out and sucker punch for that kill but he decides to switch out and that's fine because my fake out plus the double edge combo will kill that um frillish thank goodness i am faster so i can kill that frillish before he recovers so now he brings in his ryolu i know he's going to substitute storm me out of poisons but there's nothing i can do i just have to go for the earthquake I go for the Earthquake instead of the Double Edge because I don't want that little, little bit extra recoil. And I can't go for the Sucker Punch since obviously it's not attacking me and I can't go for the Fake Out since it's not the first turn. So now I have two Pokemon left, my Torkoal and my um, Cradilly. I just bring in my Torkoal knowing that I can take his physical moves. And if he wanted to roar, my Flamethrower was going to kill him before he could roar. But he makes a nice play, he goes for the copycat and he copies my last earthquake. I thought that was surprisingly, uh, that, that took me by surprise. But of course, since Torkoal is extremely physically bulky, I could take it easily. And my flamethrower will kill that Ryolu. So now he's down to his last Pokemon, his Swellow. And I just go for that flamethrower, but of course it's a Swellow. It's much, much, much faster than my Torkoal. This kills me off of the facade. So now it's up to my Cradilly versus Swellow. I go for the recover, thinking that he'll kill himself with the Brave Bird, but for some reason he de decides to protect. I think he was trying to stall off my toxic turns and then kill me with the Brave Bird if he could. But unfortunately for him, I went for the recover. And he goes for the Brave Bird, he does not get a crit. And that is the game, so a narrow 1-0. Uh, in my favor. I thought this was an absolutely amazing game. I have not seen a store team on in NU as good as his team. He is definitely to be congratulated. I am really, really impressed by how he played. And I think if my Ampharos didn't get that crit Thunderbolt, I would not have won the game. So, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this battle as much as I did, please leave a like, leave a comment and subscribe for more Pokemon Showdown battles. Thank you.